In this lesson, I want to discuss how different runtime functions compare to each other. For example, I'm sure you can guess that the function n squared grows more quickly than the function n, so an algorithm with order n squared behavior will be slower than one with order n behavior. But what about some of the more unusual runtime functions? Which function grows more quickly, 2 to the n or n factorial? Which grows more slowly, the square root of n or log n? This graph shows some of the most common runtime functions. The graph was generated by the Runtime Functions c -sharp program, which is included in this lesson's working files, in case you know c -sharp. I had to scale some of the functions to make them fit nicely on the same graph, but you can see each function's general shape, and that can tell you how they compare to each other. For example, on the right, you can see that the blue log function curves downward more than the green square root curve does. I had to scale the square root curve to fit, but you can still see that the square root function grows more quickly. So let's work through the curves. On the bottom, the blue log function grows the slowest of all. That means programs with order log n behavior are generally extremely fast. Next comes the green curve representing the square root of n. This one also grows very slowly, so algorithms with order square root of n performance also tend to be very fast. The black curve represents the function n. It looks like it takes off at a pretty good clip, but modern computers are pretty fast, so they can keep up for most problems. That means algorithms with order n performance are usually quite fast. The yellow curve represents the function n squared. If you look closely at the graph, you'll see that this one curves upward, so it gets steeper and steeper as n gets larger. This function and other higher powers of n, such as n cubed and n to the fourth, can grow very quickly. Algorithms with those runtime functions are often useful, but you may have to wait a while for them to finish. The pink curve represents the function 2 to the n. In the graph, it may look like this is only a little steeper than the n squared curve, but as n grows large, this curve actually grows much more quickly than n squared. In fact, when n is large, 2 to the n grows more quickly than any power of 2, even n to the 100, or even n to the 1 million. Because this function grows so quickly, algorithms with order 2 to the n performance are only practical for relatively small values of n. Finally, the red curve represents the factorial function. This function blows the others away. If you look closely at the graph, you'll see that it's practically vertical when it leaves the visible area. Algorithms with this performance are only practical on a computer for very small values of n. Another way to look at the performance of these functions is to look at how quickly an algorithm with their performance could solve a specific problem. For example, suppose you have a problem where n is 1000. This table shows how long it would take algorithms with different runtimes to run on a computer that can execute 1 million algorithm steps per second which is probably a bit optimistic on today's computers. You can see that the order log n and order square root of n algorithms finish almost instantly. The order n algorithm finishes in a thousandth of a second, which is faster than you could notice. Even if you increase the size of the problem, so n is bigger, say 100,000 or even a million, those algorithms will still be fast enough for most purposes. For a problem with n equals 1,000, an order n squared algorithm executes 1 million steps, so you'll take exactly one second to finish. If you increase the size of the problem, this algorithm will still give you reasonable results up to a point. For example, if n is 1 million, you'll need to wait a thousand times as long for this algorithm to finish. That's a thousand seconds or 16 and two thirds minutes. You could wait that long to solve an important problem, but it's not fast enough for an interactive program. The order 2 to the n and n factorial functions grow so quickly there's no chance you could use the last two algorithms where n is a thousand. The final way I want to compare these functions is to turn the problem around and ask how large a problem the different algorithms could solve in one second on our computer that can execute 1 million steps per second. This table shows the results. In one second, the algorithm with order log n performance can handle extremely large problems with n as large as 1 times 10 to the 300,000th power. Considering that there are somewhere around 10 to the 80 atoms in the entire universe, this algorithm can probably handle anything you can throw at it. Of course, in practice, you'll have trouble getting enough memory to store that many inputs on your computer. In any case, the algorithm's speed won't be a limiting factor. The order square root of n algorithm can handle 1 trillion inputs in one second. That's a lot fewer than the inputs for the order log n algorithm can handle, but it's still probably more inputs than you can store on your computer. The order n algorithm can handle 1 million inputs in one second. Still a lot, but you can see the limits are coming. The order n squared algorithm can handle only 1,000 inputs in one second. That's enough to do something like calculating shortest paths in a medium-sized city. But if you want to calculate shortest paths in Chicago or London, you may need to wait a couple of seconds. Believe it or not, the order 2 to the n algorithm can only handle 20 inputs within one second. 
and the order and factorial algorithm can handle only between 9 and 10 inputs, because 9 factorial is around 300,000, and 10 factorial is more than 3 million. These algorithms are so slow that they'll only work for very small problems. Ideally, you can find an algorithm that runs in order log n time, or at least no worse than order n squared time. But if you need to use 2 to the n or n factorial algorithms, your problem size better be really small or you could be in trouble.